excited to be on here on the live stream studio. And now with me is the one and only Jamie co-founder. <laughs> Jamie Danik, the co-founder of Hum Kombucha and the CEO of Hum Kombucha as well. That's but true. Co-founder is, is a much nicer title, I feel like, because it means you actually built the company on your own. Well, not on your own, but you built the company from the ground up and you didn't bring anyone else in. That's true. Right. But you actually, recently you did bring someone in. Oh, heck yeah. And he's a really important figure in your company now. Yeah. Who is that? His name is Matt Witherell, and I am completely in love platonically. Okay. Um, in that uh, we brought someone in to help manage strategy and alignment and things of getting everybody on the same page and the board and whatnot. And he is just in shining colors. I mean, he just couldn't be doing a better job. It's fantastic. And it's really, really what he's good at. Mm -hmm. And he just does it with such grace and such. It, it's amazing because then I can get to do what I am really good at. What are you really good at? <laughs> I mean, not that you're really good at a lot of things, but it's interesting because you had been the CEO for so long. And now it's like you have someone who can help you run the day-to-day, -day, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's really what's happening now. The day-to-day -day is being handed off kind of as we speak over the, over the last handful of months and next handful of months. Um, I think that as a founder, you are doing all the things that you have to do because you do, and you're not necessarily good at a lot of them. I think for me, it's about people, and it's about being with the customers and being with the investors and, and touting the brand and sharing the story. And I'm so passionate and so bought into what we're doing, and all we want to do is help people feel good. Um, and I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm really good at that. And doing what you're really good at and, and spending time there feels so good. It's so nice to spend time in your sweet spot. Yeah. We're spending so much of your day and times that you're, things that you're not as good at. It's hard to, it's hard to be there all the time. It's so when did Matt come on again? He was in... Uh, the five months ago. About five yeah. months ago. So, you know, going forward into 2020, I mean, what are some of the things that you're going to focus on personally to help move and grow the brand? all about the brand. Uh, yeah. We're rebranding as we speak. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, so that's really fun. Um, and it's all about the customers. I'm out with customers and investors and speaking, those kind of things, talking to other entrepreneurs, like really just spending time building the brand outside of the day to day. I saw you speaking to a few other entrepreneurs upstairs. Yeah. Uh, some of the biggest names in kombucha were upstairs on the fifth floor, uh, having a powwow of sorts. GT Dave, Dinah Trout, uh, Sean Lovett from Revive. Um, you were obviously there as well. Uh, Hannah Crum from Kombucha Brewers International. Um, can I ask what you guys were talking about? Yeah, we were talking about all things kombucha. We're talking mm -hmm. about our standard of identity. We're talking about how we should get together more. We're talking about how we're competitors, but we're building an industry. We're talking about how it's all about less soda, more better, functional, healthy, good for you beverages. Well, yeah. you know, it's interesting. There was, um, I wouldn't call it a rift, I would call it something where there was less kumbaya than many people expected um, this year in 2019 within the kombucha category. Um, and, you know, a lot of it has to do with that sort of statement of identity. What is kombucha? Um, what are some of the production standards around kombucha? Are you guys any closer? Is the, industry, is the category any closer to figuring out uh, what defines the word and how it's made? I think we are. I think it's less about process and how you make it and more about how you make the customer feel and the product itself. Mm -hmm. And Hum is all about helping people feel good. That's all we care about. And right. so I think we're, we get caught up in how we do things sometimes instead of what the end result is. As long as it's, I, I want to know if I'm buying a concentrate or if I'm buying a right. real kombucha or if it's, or if it's, I just want to know what it is. Um, I don't, how it's made, I think it's a little, a lot less important. It's all about helping people feel better. And we talked about this on, on the podcast and Taste Radio, and, and uh, Jamie was featured on Taste Radio. I forget the episode, but if, uh, if you look up Jamie Danik Hum Kombucha on tasteradio.com. Oh, my. <laughs> uh, that was impressive. Uh, someone that just yelled, Matt. We, we love you. <laughs> that is Matt, our new president, and Jay, our new VP of Sales. Right on. Yeah. You have a great team. That's We have a great team. <laughs> uh, you were talking about some of the problems uh, with uh, brands out there that are claiming to be kombucha, but are using concentrates and basically serving up a watered-down version of kombucha. Yeah. Is there less of that nowadays? I mean, given that the category has kind of come together and been like, this is not what we're all about, or are you seeing some more, are you seeing traction for those kinds of products? There's absolutely traction because there's no, we don't have to, there's no label laws. So because you don't have to label it, you can still say you're making a kombucha and you don't have to talk about how much actual kombucha is in there. And so it hasn't changed at all. If anything, it's probably growing. I, I don't know, but 
Are we seeing it more in sort of private label store brands, or are there branded products that are that are using concentrates? There are branded products that are using concentrates. Almost all, I'd say, ninety percent of private label is concentrate. Wow. Yeah. So for folks at home, be careful what you're buying because it might not actually be true kombucha. Yeah. Um, we know one of the other things in 2019 that we heard a lot of is that the category itself is sort of plateauing in terms of sales. Um, are you seeing that? And if so, I mean, how do you strategize around growth? How do you think about the future. Yeah, heck yeah, how can you not see it? I mean, it has really plateaued and stabilized quite a bit. It's a billion dollar category, so you know, we've gotten to a nice size and I think honestly the only way to do it is with disruption and with new flavors, new packaging, yeah, but really completely disrupting the category with something that is trending um, and customers want but is not being tackled in the kombucha in the kombucha category. And I think you'll see from Hum um, coming out at Expo in a couple of months, you're going to see some pretty awesome disruption that's going to help bring new consumers into the category. So I think the problem is, is that the consumers that are in the category are all the Uvi Groovies. They're the ones that they've already tried it. What do you call it? Like the early adopters? Sure. And then this next phase, they need something more. They need something more than this Uvi Groovy thing. They need something that's more has more of a mass appeal. And I think that that's really where the next wave of, of growth is this is it about price point? I mean, you know, kombucha is still not, um, I guess, uh, uh, the most affordable product in some cases. Even though you guys recently launched a can, a can option, um, and you it was selling at Walmart for about around two dollars. Is yeah, that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that seems like a much more accessible price point. It, does price point need to come down for for more people to try this uh, to try kombucha? I guess eventually, but honestly, it's it's expensive to make this stuff. We have not figured out as a category. It's not like you. I take water and add some probiotics and flavor. Some people do that. Uh, <laughs> some people do do that. Um, that that two dollar price point is hard to hit. It's hard to make money doing that. So yeah. I, well, I think yes for maybe in the far future the prices need to come down. I don't know that that's going to be the way to get there right away, unless of course you're bastardizing the product. Mm -hmm. yeah. We've seen a few kombucha companies. Uh, extend into other things like water kefir. Um, some launch hard kombucha varieties, alcoholic varieties. Um, you know, are those the kinds of things that are going to help sort of expand the audience for kombucha? Or is it more sort of, this is how these companies on their own are going to grow and build their own revenues? I think it's a combo. You know, I think they are going to help build the category a little bit. Certainly the alcoholic kombucha is going to bring in different consumers than we have today. Um, but I still think the water kefirs and that is still that ooey groovy. It's still that, um, you know, you got to be in the know. Um, this is yeah. not for your everyday consumer. And so I really don't think that that's going to be enough to really properly disrupt and, and make the category go from a billion to five billion. I'm really interested to know what this, uh, this oh disruptive innovation gosh. that you have coming because I'm freak excited. Out. It's I'm so really excited. good. Okay. It's so good. What I will say is it's really, really trending. Um, it's, it has to be addressed overall in our society. And Hum has just figured out a way to do it like the real deal. It's not pasteurized. It's not. It's no bullshit. It is the real deal, and it's, I, it's, it's just fantastic. I'm, I, I'm so excited. I cannot wait. I can't to wait. share it with the world. I cannot wait to share it with you guys in March. Exclusive on BevNet. Exclusive on BevNet for for a Prom skinny minute. Prom <laughs> promised here. Promised here on the live stream. <laughs> Jamie, it's um, always incredible talking to you. You're such a wonderful person. You're such a wonderful role model for other young CEOs in this industry. Thank you so much for being with me, and I uh, hope to catch up again really soon. It's my pleasure. Always a pleasure, Ray. Outstanding. Great seeing you. Hey, it's Ray Latif with Taste Radio. If you like what you just saw, hit subscribe and ding the bell. You'll be happy you did.